topic is enabling sidecar in kira server this by kartikeya and vk kartikeya is a cloud native architect at pro india he is passionate about learning new technology to solve business and developer challenges welcome kartikeya so how is the other session going on okay fine uh, how many of you have already worked on K uh, kubernetes okay so, so who are planning to work on kubernetes ah, okay fine so can you read this can you understand this meme those who have can who have already worked on kubernetes will say can laugh about it Uh, how many think kubernetes is easy use easy okay 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 kubernetes is not easy okay so even uh, when we took it in our project we thought it's actually easy you deploy a docker and it all starts working it's not the way it works uh, there are lots of things in kubernetes uh, which is too much to talk in 20 minutes and i'm not going to do that but i want to take a, i want you to take away certain things out of this uh, uh, 20 minutes or 25 minutes uh, session they have asked me to do So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you like two or three things which will help you to uh, design or architect your product when you are thinking in terms of Kubernetes. Okay. So first thing is using Kubernetes in production is not easy. Okay. You have to know lots of things just to make sure to run one Docker file. Okay. It might run once and then after that you'll start uh, feeling the pain. Okay. Those who are laughing at at this, I know they have already felt it. okay so we'll start with uh, why keda okay so we i'm going to talk about keda um keda is basically event driven auto scaling uh, uh, auto scaling uh, uh, technology where you can use it for scaling your kubernetes okay so why okay already the kubernetes scales right why you need keda we'll answer that it's basically a cloud native serverless uh, option we need works on all clouds google aws azure okay it supports uh, horizontal pod scaling we'll come to that again and it gives you a fine grain control on what you have to do okay what is keda so keda is basically that okay for example um, whenever there is i load what will happen can you can anybody answer that say for example you have like a four or five pod running and the load is high what will be the next thing will happen what is it throttle will happen okay what else pod will increase okay so how does the pod increase hpa okay so what does hpa do based on what based on super so based on ram cpu matrix it actually scales your pod okay so what if i want to uh, want so there is a web request that comes in and your cpu is being thr throttled to uh, say almost close to 90 or 80% and uh, kubernetes does what it goes in gets creates one more replica set or pod right is that what hp does okay so what if i want to do some kind of event based scaling i have a queue okay and there are like 1 lakh or 1 million uh, uh, objects in the queue okay how do i scale it can hp do it why hp i can't do it so it is not based on cpu right the the uh, the content or the data is outside the kubernetes right so if you when you want to scale any event driven application you need keda okay so next time if you are using kubernetes and you need some kind of a queue or event bus kafka any other service bus then you might think about keda okay so that's the major thing so uh, as everybody knows hp is nothing but what horizontal pod auto scaler okay it scales your pod meaning uh, for example if kubernetes wants to increase their pod because of i throughput or uh, number of users have increased okay it it needs to increase the pod right so you serve all the requests that comes in that's where the hpa does it so it does based on uh, metric monitoring and it also does the pod scaling so how how does keda comes into this picture what uh, what keda does is so there is a, already a uh, hpa there the matrix adapter the control and scaler and admission with uh, these three things will take care of scaling your 
uh, uh, Kubernetes pod based on the load. For example, there is a queue or event hub which has 1 million requests and you, you might need 10,000 pods, right? Or 20,000 pods or 10,000 pods, 5,000 pods. Horizontal pod scaler cannot scale it. This matrix uh, KEDA will actually scale it and then based on that workload, the Kubernetes service will be called, okay? Yeah. So if now if uh, can anybody tell me what is the difference between normal cube jobs and uh, KEDA jobs? What's the difference? Any idea? Yeah. Yes, basically, yeah. So cube jobs is nothing but normal cron jobs, right? The timer trigger or any other jobs that runs. And cube, um, KEDA, KEDA jobs are based on uh, number of requests or the external events, okay? What is the good thing about KEDA is for uh, if you don't use or if there are queue, if the queue has zero uh, elements or items, okay, this pod can be scaled to zero. So when the pod scale to zero, what is the advantage? Cost, okay, you can save lots of cost. So whenever there is an I throughput, when it's needed, it scales up, goes up, 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 up. When, when, once it's down, the KEDA will automatically bring the pods, number of pods down and you can save lots of money. So uh, we, we saw about uh, HPA, right? That's the main thing and we also saw about KEDA. KEDA is basically a event driven technology which we use here. Uh, the actual context of uh, this event is talking about uh, AD workload identity, okay? So for example, um, so what if I want to use uh, uh, Azure resource, say Key Vault or any other uh, database, any other database by the pod, okay? So wha how can I use the resource? Say for example, I want to, my pod wants to use the uh, database, how can I use it? What is that? Using our bag, what else? Selector. What? Service. Server what? Service accounts. Correct. Service accounts. So can you also use it through connection string also, right? Correct? Is that right? No? Okay. Fine. So you can, by if, if you're using connect, connection strings, what will happen? What are the disadvantages of using connection string? Username and password, why? If you give, if you give what is username and password, what will happen? Security, okay, fine. What, uh, who is gonna do the security problem? So, okay, so what if I, I give the connection string? Okay, what are the problems that will come up when I give a connection string? What is that? Connection management. Huh? Okay. Maintainability issues. I'm not going to tell you about Okay. Yeah. Production connections are going to be done. Yeah. 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 Delete star put wrong. Okay. So that's not the right way to do it. And also writing code for accessing the uh, resources is not the right way to do. Even uh, and you can still use RBAC and all the SA, but it's not straightforward where you can connect those uh, resources. Okay. So with the Azure AD workload identity, they have made it very simple. Okay. So how it does this? Um, I'll show you the code first. So this the, you have to just write these line two lines of code into the uh, code, then you'll be able to uh, handle that. I will show you the other codes also for uh, configuring it. Okay. So how how this how this uh, Azure AD workload identity works? When the kubelet uh, wants to connect to a workload, right? What it will do is it'll ask for as somebody said the service account is created, and then yeah, the service token is got. Once the service token is got, the service token is authenticated by Azure AD, and then the Open AD discovery document will validate that and the workload will get access to the um, Azure resource. So workload there and this Azure resource will get access once this intermittent steps is over. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 
as i said uh, there are like only these steps available um, so what you need to do normally is you have to uh, uh, configure the oidc uh, specific feature flags you have to get the oidc url uh, since uh, interest of time actually i did the code uh, they said laptop also not uh, you cannot bring the laptop uh, i can't I mean i can't uh, what to say um, create a video also it takes lots of time to, for me to create a video to do a uh, demo of 5 minutes that's very tough so i just thought i'll put it here uh, so you need to create a mutating admission web book and then uh, you need to install acwi this is the main command here once you create the service account and federated account you can actually test it it will uh, give access to the azure thing okay so yeah so major takeaways out of 20 minutes right i i it's too much to give you lots of things major takeaway i want to tell you uh, main is the major takeaways hpa has its limitation what is the limitation for hpa what is that yeah, so it, you cannot scale based on any event or any external sources, right? So that's a major uh, problem with HPA. That is solved by KEDA. The identity can be configured using ACWI, okay? In, whenever you want any Azure resources or any other resources to access your, uh, your pod to access the, any of the resources, you can use the ACWI, okay? Any questions you have? Hmm. Serverless, okay. Any other question? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So first question, how does it work with serverless, right? So you have to, you can configure that KEDA, uh, I forgot the actual keyword. You can configure to the minimum number of pods you can run. Uh, uh, for every scalar, it, there will be one uh, pod. For example, uh, event grid will have one, sorry, event app will have one, uh, queue will have one, service, uh, service app will have one. You can configure that and the load will increase. You can also configure number of, uh, uh, say for example, I take, a thousand uh, queue items from the in information. Then it can scale up, and once it goes to that level, it will automatically scale down. Your question was HTTP, right? Yeah, I mean, what, what did you find any problem in that? Okay, so okay, fine. So the, there might be a cold start. If you keep one pod running all the time, you should be able to figure it out because I have worked on both HTTP and uh, queue triggers. Uh, the thing is, uh, we in our company we did a huge. Uh, cost saving uh, initially we calculated that uh, it's a basically ml model we ran it it cost around some 21 lakhs we started using keda and the cost came around three and a half lakhs okay and out of which uh, one lakh went to log management okay the unnecessary log cube rights that log management so we almost saved like um, 17 to 18 lakhs by using keda okay because it will only uh, scale on need and then timer okay so it will only scale on what is needed and then it will scale down. That's the huge advantage. Meaning you can even say 0.2 CPU or 0.1 CPU and you will be on charge only for 0.1 CPU. Okay. Yeah. I have one doubt. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So I have configured, one question I have. Where are you? Ah. Let's say that I have configured MariaDB to scale based on number of queries that are coming. Okay. Right. So what should I give in the connection string? Let's say that MariaDB increased from five replicas to 10 replicas. Okay. So how the pod will get connect to the MariaDB? So you want to repli uh, scale the MariaDB or the pod? Yes, let's say that I have given maximum replicas as 10 for MariaDB. Okay. So what should be the connection string from the pod? Because I cannot use service name to connect to the MariaDB, right? Because the service will send the traffic it, it may send the traffic to one pod at a one time, second time, it may go to the second pod, right? So I cannot use a service name to connect to the MariaDB. Instead, I have to give a pod name, correct? So in that case, what will, what will be the connection string from the pod to connect to the MariaDB? Okay, so you are saying the MariaDB sits on... Scaling, based on the event, let's say that number of queries that are coming to the MariaDB, okay. and it has increased from five replicas to 10 replicas. Okay. Now, the pod needs to connect to the MariaDB. Let's hmm. say the front end no. is a, a PHP-based application. So there is always be a service, okay? The service guy will take care of the talking to the pod. No, if I'm not, uh. because one request can go to one replica, the second request can go to the second replica, right? But the second replica will not have my data. 
no uh, i think uh, i don't understand the question because it's very trivial db problem which is solved like under, uh, 50 years before i'm just trying to understand what is your problem okay one simple question no, can no, we have i understand the pod scaling is asking about how will it know which pod to go that is yes. all solved in the db itself right hmm. yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to understand yeah that's what i'm trying to say because that keda is not actually built for uh, that level of scaling i am no, i'm not sure because there is still a scan, uh, cassandra scaler that the scales on based on the query but it's not like uh, which pod to go that's the basically distributed computing which is already is distributed computing problem which is already solved uh, you can actually talk to me out uh, we can just discuss maybe you can that. connect offline okay yeah yeah please, yeah, please sure, we'll do. thank you okay fine Keda pod for using Keda, I'm talking about Keda deployment or Keda jobs. You just need to put these two. For Keda, this is for Keda. It's not for all the pods. It's for Keda pods it is. Okay. So there are lots of scalers in Keda. This is an authorization. Okay. Hello. Any other questions? Hello. Yeah. Uh, in the events which are pending, is there any kind of prioritization which can be done so that you can give priority to that? Okay. So that does nothing to do with keda you can use different uh, say user service hub or event hub for that priorities okay it's not based on keda keda just pulls the uh, records from the uh, say service hub you can set priorities or orders in service hub or kafka they can, then you can pull it because i i understand the question because queue does not have any orders if you want orders or priority you'd have to use uh, different topics or uh, use the different i mean uh, not the queue you can use event tab or event tab or service bus event tab is better or kafka yes this this is solely dependent on azure ad yes even if if you say for example your workloads in aws and then your uh, identity or your identity is in ad then it will actually works that way so this, it's actually basically ad thing there are lots of authorizer but concept is almost the same for all the other authorizers uh, excuse me Uh, so the 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 uh, colleague was asking about the database right so yeah. if we can scale the database right so let's say i add few replicas hmm. uh, i am assuming that the database will start writing new data in the new replicas right once yes. the data set but uh, or the new parts in this case but let's say if keda tries to scale down what happens to the new replicas which is now storing the data what okay. happens to those see data? i think now i got the question there are two things right the compute and storage right keda takes care of compute not the storage okay. is that uh, answer the question no that still doesn't answer because uh. the data is still let's say it, the now the uh, let's say like the new uh, compute units are that has created yes let's say the storage is separate keda yes. doesn't take care of it yes. now the data is written to these uh, new storage locations because the new parts come in yes but now the keda says okay let's stop all the five replicas because i don't need them yes but now the data these new volumes would not be attached to the old replicas right or would it be a common storage because that was That's a little bit confusing okay so the storage should be common okay but uh, how will the database know that these new because even though all these replicas right they have their own uh, uh, volumes storage, yes yeah, yeah yeah something like but those folder. volumes will be ephemeral see i, I have not written a one scale uh, db db scaler on my own okay because if you uh, that's what i said you know there's a distributed problem where there will be one hard disk and there can be multiple cpus if you can think in those terms once the compute is done and the data shouldn't be in the uh, femoral uh, femoral pods mm -hmm. right it should actually write it if the write is not done it will the pod will still be running and then it once the write is over there will be a uh, event that comes to the pod to kill itself for yeah. terminating okay the one, still the, uh, i mean we should probably look internally more because of what i don't understand is how the old replicas will start reading data from the new replicas no no set. nobody reads say okay so this I, again we are divide we are confused getting confused with compute and storage okay okay storage is there that is one probably okay, okay. no then let me rephrase the question hmm. can database be scaled up and down yes why not that's okay. how the whole thing works no 
No, no, the applications can be done. But uh, my question is whether the database part, not the application part. Okay. The, can the database, let's say I'm using Elasticsearch or MariaDB, mm. my, my application is in Java. I understand applications can scale, that is clear. Because it will be serving more data, that's okay. But can database layers, can those also be scaled and come down? See, that's what they're promising. I've never okay. used a database okay, scaler. Okay, okay, okay. Understood. Because Thank you. I don't think so, MariaDB scaler is there, but uh, for Cassandra scaler is there, because for MariaDB it's a SQL. Okay. okay. So, it's a, it's, you cannot scale a SQL vertically, sorry, horizontally. Got but it. Cassandra and all uh, horizontally scalable. I think now I got the question correct. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I don't okay. think so, MariaDB does have a scaler, but Cassandra there is a scaler. Got it. Thank yeah. you very much. Perfect. I think now I got it. Yeah. Fine. So, so okay, I, I'll just give a huge shout out about my book I wrote. Uh, this book is uh, about how to become an architect. And uh, if you want to get your career to next level, this book helps those who have actually, how many of you have bought this book? Anybody here? One, five, ten, okay. Almost like 12 people. Oh, the lots are there. Nice. Okay. So those, those who have bought it are very much happy and I got a very nice review from Amazon. Uh, they wrote a review also. It's a very nice book. I mean, it, I have to, it, it took me two years to write this. Uh, it talks about uh, the journey I took uh, from, say, developer uh, to... This, to this level uh, and the way uh, first initially I thought all the problems if I am technically updating myself I should be able to crack the software industry but it's not the case 60% of it is something else communication stakeholder management uh, how you talk to yourself how to you present yourself how you position yourself how you market yourself and all this is put up and all, all are the uh, basics you should learn and if you want to be uh, in current with the technologies, right? There are lots of things comes up, Keda comes up, something else comes up. How do people, some people are uh, always in current. So there are certain basics you need to learn. I have actually written all this in those books, okay? So just, uh, if you want a copy also I have, uh, in Amazon 600, I sell it for 450 because uh, it's actually cheaper for me as a author. This is my LinkedIn connect. If you want to connect, please do uh, connect with me. Uh, we'll be happy to help you on any questions with respect to Keda or Kubernetes. Anything, any, any technology problem you should be able to, um, I, I should be able to answer or I can, I, I should be able to help you. Uh, any other questions you guys have? Anything with respect to event, I can, you can ask me, I have worked extensively. Event streaming, event based. Thanks for an interactive session, Karthikeyan, and uh, thanks for keeping up the time as well, appreciate it. And we'd like to give you a small token of appreciation uh, from money.